Well, hi everyone and welcome to today's video. It's all about canning our homegrown tomatoes. It's all about canning grandma's way with a little bit of a modern twist. I hope you stay tuned. This video is all about water bath canning, how my grandma Fanny taught me how to safely water can foods. Today we are going to be canning tomatoes. Well everyone, welcome back. Today is a canning video. As you know, I love the old fashioned way of doing things, but I do add a little bit of a modern twist to it. Today I'm going to show you how my grandma canned tomatoes. But we're going to add just a little bit of a safety in this canning recipe. That way you can be confident and you can be assured that when you can something, it's good on your shelf, not just one year, but many years. My food last me three years, four years. You can even eat tomatoes five or six years. What is the difference? Well, let me explain. When you can and you can properly, it can stay on your shelf for almost indefinitely. What you will lose is some nutritional value when you have your canned goods more than three years. But it's still good if it's sealed and it's canned correctly. So Grandma Fanny, she taught me how to can. She used to use some vitamin C, but I'm going to use some lemon juice. And we are going to add a little bit of lemon juice to each jar so we can safely water can these tomatoes. Let me go ahead and let me show you. All right, I have it all assembled. I'm actually going to move my camera on a different point of view for all of you. It makes it easier for me, and then you can see the whole thing. These are tomatoes that I picked myself. These are all from my garden, and as you can see, they are not all very nice. They're irregular shaped, and what we do is we're going to cut the cores and cut any of the bad spots out. Bad spots get cut into, put into this beside me, and the good is going to go into another bowl. Canning tomatoes is a procedure. It doesn't happen really quickly if you want to can them in a way that's very presentable. Now I have canned tomatoes with the skins on. I simply don't like that product. I like a product that is just like store-bought where you can open the jar and you don't have to worry about skins and getting skins in your teeth. I have done that on occasions only when I'm really swamped with a lot of work and I have bushels of tomatoes to do but then the product isn't A+. Plus. And if we're gonna go to all the work of canning, you know, take a couple extra steps and then make sure that your work is complete. I collect all kinds of enamelware. This enamelware is not vintage. This enamelware is vintage. This is the replica and this is the real thing. So go ahead and wash these and then we're gonna go ahead and work on the tomatoes. I have to do this to all the tomatoes and then we have some hot water that's boiling because we're gonna drop them in the hot water for three minutes so we can slip the skins off. So I'll see you guys in about an hour. It's gonna take me an hour to do all this. This is the bulk of the work. See you guys in a little bit. Now, let me show you something. Let's see if we have a tomato that's a little has a bad spot. All you do is you're going to cut that off just like this. Cut the bad spot out and the tomato is rest is good. Same with here. Don't throw the tomato away because you have a little bit of bad spot. How did my grandma know if there was a bad spot? Let me show you. Okay, so we have a spot like this. So we're gonna cut this. We're gonna cut the bad spots out. And you look at it, it's not gray, so you cut it all out and it smells good. That's how grandma, that's how she figured it all out. All right, so now we have the boiling water. We're going to go ahead and we're going to drop the tomatoes in the boiling water. Now do not leave them in too long. You only need to leave them in for about 
four to five minutes at the longest. We'll put them all in. Hopefully you'll fit most of them. All right, so now we're outside and this is exactly how Grandma Fanny canned her tomatoes. She would sit outside along under a big shade tree and they would work on their tomatoes this way. She would take a garden hose and now we are going to put cold water in these tomatoes. And that way the tomatoes stop cooking and then we take the skins off. So we are going to do it exactly how Grandma did it. We had big roast pans of tomatoes. We're going to fill it up with water and cool them down. are back and now we're going to chop up these tomatoes and we're going to use exactly what my grandma would use so I'm going to use this to chop it up because grandma did not use anything electric when she was working with her tomatoes we also are going to use canning salt now I normally use Himalayan salt in my recipes but we're going to use what she had and this is what she would have had and she would have been very strict on using a Morton's canning salt and Morton still makes their canning salt today. And then we're going to add a little bit of sugar. And then I'm going to add some Italian seasonings. The same as what she would have used. So let me show you how we put this all together. And then we're going to can. If you want, it doesn't really matter. But we're going to just chop these up. And I'm going to chop them up as I cook them on the stove. Basically, you just need to cook them on the stove until you get the consistency that you like. We're going to go ahead and add the sugar right away and also we're going to add the salt now i go easy on the salt but salt does give flight so we're just going to add a little of the salt now i don't know how much she used she didn't use a whole lot but she used some so we're going to go with just a couple of teaspoons three or four just like that as a young married woman i was 17 when she taught me how to can she didn't really use a whole lot of measurements and that's typical of most cooks, especially cooks from the Mennonite traditions. Pennsylvania Dutch cooks really do not do a whole lot of measuring. This is raw sugar that I'm using. Grandma would have just used the regular sugar. We used a lot of seasonings that maybe not everybody would use. We used a lot of saffron. Saffron is actually the piston of a flower and it's the crocus flower and we use saffron a lot in our cooking with our um, chicken pot pie and cooking with chicken corn soup we didn't use a whole lot of spices and that's why everybody often says where is your seasoning when you cook your food mama always had salt and pepper on the table and then we would season it to how we like it that is simply our tradition and way of doing it i am going to add a little bit of italian seasoning Grandma added Italian seasoning in some of them, and some of them, it was just plain like this. When I finished here, then we will go on to canning it, and I'll show you what Grandma did to turn this into a safer canning recipe. And this was done, oh, 35 years ago. Grandma, Grandma done this her whole life. They added a little bit of lemon juice to each jar. Now, the reason why we use lemon juice is, I'm sure that wasn't something done like in the 1800s. But in today's world, our ground and our vegetables are different acidity than what they were in the 1800s and the 1900s. Our tomatoes are bred and are different in the acidity, some of them. You can water bath tomatoes without using any lemon juice. I do that all the time, but if you want to can and be extra safe, adding a little lemon juice to each jar and water bathing will give you that knowledge that you know that it is purely safe and you don't ever have to worry about it. I have never personally heard of botulism through tomatoes, through chili, because there's meat and beans, but this is a high acid item. But grandma always did add lemon juice and she was very particular about making sure that I added lemon juice as well. And sometimes I will admit that I am too lazy and I don't feel like doing it. And it's that I shouldn't do that. So. 
I'm letting you know the honest truth about that. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bottle these up and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so grandma always used ball lids and that's what we're using today. She was really strongly opinionated on her ball lids. So we're gonna put our ball lids in there while the water is heating up because we will be putting them in hot water. I'm going to be putting all of these tomatoes in the jars and then I'll show you the lemon juice. The lemon juice I canned back in 2019. So this is store-bought lemon juice. I get it in bulk and then I can it and that way it stays fresh and it's not in the plastic. Then I have lemon juice whenever I need it. We're gonna put all this together and then I'll go on the next step. The jars are new and some of them are my grandma's. This was my grandma's jar. I made sure all the rims were not cracked. Grandma was really fussy about that because if you have a cracked rim, you will not have a seal. All right, we all know what this is all about. I'm gonna go ahead and do this off the camera and then I'll show you the next step. a teaspoon of lemon juice to each jar. The lemon juice will not change the flavoring at all. And this just gives a little more acid. Grandma also added vitamin C to her pears and peaches. Now the vitamin C will help your pears stay nice and white when you're canning them. All right, we're gonna wipe the rims and we're gonna make sure these are in hot water. And then I'm gonna get out grandma's very old canner. Hopefully there's still no holes in it. It's very, very old. We're gonna can these up for 30 minutes and then I'll say goodbye to all of you. This is the finished project and this is what they look like. These are vintage replicas of a recipe that I love to use and it shows meatballs. I thought that would be fun. And this one here is a replica of Frank's seven, seven tempting ways to fix a Frank. Well, a hot dog. <laughs> I just did that for cuteness, whatever. I enjoy doing stuff like that. And I can't wait to share with you tomorrow what we're working on. Bye everybody on my kitchen shelf and we're gonna eat all this food this week and I always put my tomatoes out to ripen a little better now when I have food like this sitting out I do not wash it first because when you wash it it will break it down so when I'm letting my tomatoes sit to ripen a little more so I'm ready to eat they are unwashed so I'm gonna go ahead and put all of these things up here in my little shelf here and it is full already. I also change then the cloth that they're sitting on each week. So that's what it looks like. And I still have some potatoes. And there you go.